China is still a graveyard for millions of tons of foreign electronics. But today, most of the scrap comes from Chinese consumers themselves. Despite efforts by the government to modernize electronic waste recycling, a cottage industry of crude recyclers still exists and has changed little over the last two decades. Workers in Guiyu stir vats of acid in order to melt the gold off of circuit boards. A day's work can bring in about six dollars, but at the price of inhaling toxic fumes for 10 to 12 hours. Like the gold, the melted tin from these baked computer chips will likely be sold as raw material. Right now, electronic waste is the number one fastest growing component of the waste stream worldwide. All full-power U.S. TV stations must transition to digital-only broadcast. The digital transition. 12, or call this number coupons. to get a coupon for a convertible. Take an to FCC. receive a digital I put it out on the street for garbage collection. Which documented and more and more electronics are being introduced into the waste stream. the world. With as long as they get processed properly, I don't see any other consequences. Products tainted in lead paint from China. A free market e-waste situation. It's actually coming back Old to us. Microchips. Lead and toys and Remark jewelry. them as new and as military grade. To address the challenge of e-waste. In a move to update the American broadcasting system, the U.S. government in 2009 mandated that all TV stations switch from analog to digital broadcasting. Many analog TV owners purchased new TVs, choosing not to cash in government coupons for digital converter boxes. In other words, most old TVs were headed for the trash. Any single TV contains as much as 5,000 different toxic components. The kinds that are precisely going to be replaced contain significant amounts of lead and cadmium. Mercury, lead. Multiply that by millions of hundreds of millions of units. If they wind up in incinerators or landfills. This enormous stock of e-waste. Can get into the air or the soil or the waterways. Out of the hundred percent of materials that are in a landfill, one percent of it is electronics. And, but this 1% that's, that's there contributes 70% of the toxins that you would find in a landfill. So obviously electronics is not like your cardboard box that you're tossing into the trash. It's very toxic and it's very important that we, will, that we recycle. This is a serious issue because of what these products are made from. The components of electronic waste, which include chlorinated plastics as well as heavy metals, can emit pollutants that are dangerous for human health and the environment. Right now, most electronic waste that's collected is actually exported, so most of it's not processed here in the U.S. Anywhere from 50 to 80 percent of all electronic products being collected in the U.S. for recycling are in fact being exported and where they're causing harm elsewhere. Maybe there's a free e-waste recycling pickup center that day and you drop off your recycling. At many recycling plants, electronics are dismantled and in some cases incinerated. But more often than not, discarded parts are packed into containers and shipped overseas to countries like India or China, where raw material extraction is up to 10 times cheaper. Precious metals, plastics, microchips, anything of worth is stripped, reused, or resold. Um, people are dismantling them with very rudimentary tools, with no protection, sometimes they're just burning them um, to, to dispose of them. So a variety of things take place after, after they leave you. 